Blog Talk Radio. Raw living is a state of mind, a way of being in alignment with your body. Raw living means you put yourself and your body first. Your host, Gita Sadu Rob, is the founder of Nosh Detox, located in the UK. They offer innovative raw food smoothies sold across Europe. You experience it in your skin, your body, and your mind. And now it's time for Living Raw Radio. Good evening, everybody. This is Living Raw Radio, and this is your host, Geeta Sidhu Rob, with you on a nice, cold, and rainy London evening. Today, we're going to talk about You know, the one unifying subject that actually makes everybody anywhere, anyhow, neat, either because they hate it or they love it or it's a devil incarnate or it's just their best friend, is sugar. Sugar. It looks white. It looks harmless. It looks friendly. It's something as children we've been taught to crave and want. And it's absolutely amazing because sugar, depending on how you look at it, is good for you, it's bad for you, it's evil for you, and in fact, it's just all of those things. And today, I'm joined by one of my favorite authors, Laura Bond, who is the writer of Mums Not Having Chemo, and Laura's been on with me before, and we're having the privilege of working together, and so Laura's going to come and keep me company and be my guest on the show. Hi, Laura, are you there? Hi, Gita. Wonderful to be on here again. Yeah, it's so nice to have you. So we're going to talk about sugar. How do you feel about yes. sugar? Well, it's on everyone's lips at the moment, and the problem is it goes straight to the hips, as we're now discovering. I mean, we're we're really realizing that sugar is a toxin, much the same as the chemicals and pesticides that we now know we should be avoiding. Um, And being a toxin, it's something capable of damaging tissues, causing disease. I mean, overconsumption of sugar is linked to everything from obesity and cancer to autoimmune disease and even Alzheimer's. Um, Recent reports are showing that insulin resistant is linked to Alzheimer's. So from every way you look at it, it's it's really bad news. Um, But the problem is it's just so addictive. So uh, as a health coach, you know, one of the big challenges is is helping people to curb their sugar cravings. Yeah. I mean, one of the other things, though, about sugar is actually that it's an addiction. And I don't think we spend enough time talking about the fact that in Nosh we have people come in and they absolutely crave sugar. I mean, it's like a living mm. thing in their system and in their bodies. And so what, what, don't, do you not find that in, in your work as a health coach as well? Absolutely. And I mean, as a, as a writer and researcher as well, because there was recently a study where they gave rats the choice between sugar and cocaine, and over time the rats decided they preferred sugar to co- cocaine. So that's, <laughs> like, that's how serious? addictive it really is. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I, I mean, our brain, we've, we've evolved to, we're, we're wired to love sugar. Um, but in caveman times, um, there wasn't Krispy Kreme on every corner. So it, it was fine because we we didn't have... We, only, we we got as much as we need, which is not very much. I mean, yeah. we can I mean, handle it about one or sugar. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Was, it, was, that... it was honey. It was from vegetables. Yeah. You know, the natural sweetness that you have from a carrot as opposed to, you know, um, the sugar that you're getting in yogurts, in catch, ketchup, um, in all these. I mean, it's really the hidden sugars that's the problem, the, the hidden sugars in processed foods. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we should just take a step back, and I mean, this took me a little while to work it out, but basically, in terms of sugar, what we're saying is that sugar is sucrose, but that when you have sucrose that is actually in a vegetable or in a fruit, the body eats the sweet product and breaks it down into being glucose and fructose and then the body uses that glucose and fructose because you need glucose otherwise you would die your brain functions on glucose exactly exactly we do need you know some glucose and fructose and and in a whole food form you're absolutely right the body knows what to do with it um but it's when we get these frankenstein foods like high fructose corn syrup um, which yeah. is an industrial product that's now, you know, made its way into everything um, from ketchup well, to yogurt well, to ice problem. cream. Yeah, but Laura, that's not, it's almost not fair because the thing is, is that you tell everybody, we've just said fructose here, right? We've said, like, I, mm. fructose I don't consider to be a bad thing because I think that with, no, no. when you have fruit sugars, 
which are naturally occurring mm. with fiber, the body takes hours to break that down. So there's no rush of glucose. There's no needing to create insulin to deal with it. And you don't have all the, you know, the ongoing consequences. But when you then look at a bottle and it says fructose or fruit sugars or corn mm. fructose, you think this is a healthy product. And it can't be further from the truth, can it? Absolutely not. I mean, that, it's, it's really good you brought that up because I think a lot of people are confused by that. Um, you know, when a subject hits the headlines, often people only read the headline and they, and they don't then take in um, sort of all the, all the details and, and, and look at the whole picture. And it, and it is complicated. You've got, you know, anything that's part of a whole food and especially when, you know, you get fructose from fruits which are packed with antioxidants, enzymes, micronutrients, um, you know, our body needs these things. And as you said, with the fiber, it's broken down much more slowly. But when you get this industrial processed product, high fructose corn syrup, that the body has no idea how to handle, um, you know, it, it then just gets shunted straight to the liver um, and, and converted to fat. And, and that's when the problems really start. So we've had an exponential rise in high fructose corn syrup, which is very different to the normal natural fructose we'll say get in an apple. Um, and since since the proliferation of high fructose corn syrup, we've got an explosion of obesity and um, heart problems and diabetes. So, yeah, people really need to understand the difference between those two things, that anything that's a normal whole food is really not the problem here. It's, it's all about um, the products that have the hidden sugars that, that we need to be concerned about. Yeah, and the other thing that also I wanted us to talk about is that I mean, I run a business where we make juice fasts. And from the mm. beginning, when we started, we brought juice fasting to England in 2008. And what we did is that there's a very American way of making juices where you use the juicer, you put the vegetable and the fruit into the juicer and the pot got thrown out and you sort of kept the liquid, which was in essence almost mm. like a sugar water and drank that. And I've always had a very big problem with that because... Firstly, you lost 90% of the product, and I, was, I couldn't quite understand why you would lose everything that was in a product and just keep mm. something that tasted sweet and, and it was supposed to somehow be healthy for you. So we blended. We put in fruits, mm. we put in vegetables, we put in seafood, and we blended it. And because nutrients go very, very quickly when you make a juice, we keep them dark, and then we, we make sure that the product is kept as, as, as dark as it possibly can, and we deliver it for cold pressing or to the clients within a couple of hours of actually making them. You hear, though, again and again from people going, but I don't want a fruit juice. What I want is a vegetable juice. And there's a place where we try and explain that, in fact, vegetables also have sugars in them. It's not that mm. vegetables don't have... Absolutely. I mean, like beetroot is a very high sugar product, isn't it? Uh, you, you, you put that in a juice and you'll immediately taste the difference to a vegetable juice because it's, it's, very, it's very sweet. Um, very sweet indeed. So, and and but but that's so important what you mentioned about about the freshness because and and all your juice blends are blends of vegetables and fruits. Um, but you know why your product is fantastic is because they have all the enzymes, um, all the nutrients intact. And the problem with products on the shelves that the juices that have a shelf life of you know four or five weeks. It's, it's been pasteurized, the juice, so it's lost all those essential enzymes, all the things that are so vitally important for our system. So in essence, fruit juices that aren't fresh, that have been pasteurized and gone through you know, refining and heat processing, they have lost them, you know, their nutrients. And, and then it really is as if you're, you're drinking just the sugar with all the nutrients taken out of it. Yeah, well, it's like a sugar syrup. But, I mean, also, to be fair, pasteurization, it doesn't give them a lifetime of weeks. It gives them a shelf life of months, if not up to a year and a half, you know? Oh, I didn't realize so I had think, that wrong. Wow. Yeah. yeah. No, it's appalling mm. because when you have... It is amazing, juice, isn't it? It's gross when you think about it. But when it you're looking gross. at a juice... Yeah, it's, been, it's a minimum of nine-month shelf life going all the way up mm. to an 18-month shelf life. Wow that you cannot create that other than when you pasteurize. Now, the other way, of course, of telling a high-sugar juice is that when you've got a juice that sits on a shelf and it mm. doesn't separate, 
that juice there has actually been pasteurized. It doesn't matter what they tell you, what you've done to it. If the juice doesn't mm. separate, it's been pasteurized. Because when you, that's mm. why you pasteurize juices, because they look prettier when they haven't been, when, when they've been pasteurized, because they don't separate. Mm. And, so, and we've become accustomed to that look. So then as customers, that's what we go for, because, you know, that's what we've been brought up on, and that's what we consider to be normal. And then we, you know, I'm, so it's, it's sort of it's re-educating crazy. people, isn't it, about what real real foods and real juices look like. Well, I I think because no one's going to come and tell us, because if I'm making a product and my name is Mr. Mm -hmm. Big Conglomerate and that product is not very good for you, I'm not going to tell you if you drink this product, you're going to get fat or your teeth are going to fall out, am I? Because that doesn't really (laughs) suit my purpose. (laughs) It wouldn't be in your physical interest. (laughs) (laughs) Sugar is also insidious, isn't it? Because, in fact, isn't sugar a product that cancer feeds on? Absolutely. It's cancer's favorite food. I mean, it's it's really a, a cancer accelerator. Um, we now know that uh, a normal healthy cell has just four receptor sites for sugar, whereas a cancer cell has 96. So cancer cells Whoa. are absolute, you know, glucose guzzling machines. Um, so, and, and and I mean, every doctor knows that cancer loves sugar because the way that they detect cancer in the body is through a PET scan. And, and the way that that works is that they give the patient a, um, a radioactive, sh- radioactive sugar so that they drink it. And when they go under the PET scan, then all the cancer cells go straight like homing pigeons to that radioactive sugar. They light up on, on the PET scan and the doctors go, oh, look, there, there, there's the cancer. We can see it because the sugar's just told us where it is. So, That's I mean, incredible. This is not, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite... Amazing knowing that that so many doctors then don't tell their patients about just how dangerous it is. I mean, it's the very first thing you need to give up if if you've been given a diagnosis of cancer. But I mean, really, now, for anyone, saying, because mm. yeah, carry on. Well, I mean, sugar is is a very acidic um, thing as well, and we and we now know that you know an acidic body. Um, is is a body that's more likely, more vulnerable to get a chronic disease in the first place. So, um, it you know, for anyone um, wanting to cleanse their body, stay healthy, stay balanced, giving up sugar is 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 a pretty obvious first step towards better health. Okay, so what would you do? What would be your suggestions in um, in in how to deal with a sugar craving? I think, I mean, one of one of the things that um, I think really works is to bring it, to bring more sour foods into the diet, to reacquaint your taste buds with sour and bitter foods because they're things that have really been missing in our diets. And it, it's meant to take between 21 to 66 days to, to, to change a habit. And if, if you try out these things, and it could be wheatgrass, you know, that's fantastic. You're getting your taste buds used to a different flavor, and that's, brilliant for cleansing the system but other sour sort of foods are fermented foods so things like sauerkraut kimchi um even kefir if if you if your body can handle um dairy Uh, but you know fermented foods are ideal for weight control they're very alkaline um and they're cleansing for the blood as well so do you have them once a day once a week twice a day i I, I know how to incorporate fermented once a day, I mean, in every traditional diet on the planet, they had fermented foods in their diet daily. Um, and I really yeah, tried it. And... Mm. Growing up, we did that. We always had, as an Indian growing up, with Indian food, you mm. always had, like, for example, you had homemade yogurt with every single meal. Oh. Ah, wow, homemade, that would have been incredible. So what, did you, what do you do with your, with, with your meal? Uh, I'm a huge fan of sauerkraut, so I try to have incorporate that into one of my meals a day. So um, I do eat meat, so if I'm having a, a grass-fed organic steak, I'll have a little bit of sauerkraut on the side. I even find it's quite good with an omelette. I have, have a salad, an omelette, and a little bit of tangy sauerkraut on the side. Um, it's, it's really quite a versatile um, condiment. Um, but for people who aren't so into the, the pickled cabbage, they can try you know, things like the homemade yogurt or the kefir um, or even apple cider vinegar and that's a fantastic one for weight loss as well so if you get unpasteurized apple cider vinegar it's a fermented food so it's brilliant for rebalancing the gut and it's fantastic for cutting sugar cravings so in that instance you you might just have so you'd have just one one teaspoon diluted in a little bit of water um, 
uh, and you'd have that before meals. So you could have, say, three teaspoons throughout the day before meals. Um, but you, you definitely don't want to take it straight. You definitely need to dilute it in a bit of wa water. Um, Why? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, you can sort of have a bit of an anaphylactic sort of re reaction um, because it, cause it is, uh, you know, apple cider vinegar, it can have a bit of a... Um, reaction if you if you take it straight so you do need to incorporate it in or dilute it in water or it's fine to incorporate in a salad dressing so if you've got it mixed with other olive oil and lemon juice and 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 things then that's fine as well it's just best not to have it a teaspoon straight but even the other thing isn't it also true that sugar tends to kill the digestive acids that you actually need or at least a diet high in sugar and processed food so that you don't end up with as much digestive acids as you need in order to break down your food properly. Yeah, and I, I mean, that's another way that apple cider vinegar is great because it gets those um, essential stomach acids really churning. So it, it, it really helps the, the stomach prepare for digesting, you know, whatever food you're about to eat. Um, so I think fermented foods are good. I think, you know, people have been so scared of fat for, for so long. That's been public enemy number one. And really, that's a great way to help you feel fuller for longer um, and to cut cravings. So you're looking at healthy fats like, you know, almonds, Brazil nuts, all the nuts and seeds, avocados, coconut oil. Um, and, you know, if you are a meat eater, then, you know, um, good quality meats and fish. If you're getting enough fat in your diet, um, it, it, that can also really curb sugar cravings. Well, and also because fat, I mean, as a raw food chef, I've always been trained that fat is where you carry flavor. So when you mm, put fat oh, into yeah. your food, yeah, you need a less flavoring, so you don't need as much salt and whatever else that you've got. But because it carries the flavor, you feel it in your mouth for longer. And oh, that's the, interesting. Yeah, and it, and it, you, so you always, when you create a raw food meal, you're always looking for the acidic, the fat, either the fermented or something, you know, like the, the uh, like with a sour or a bitter taste, usually not both because you'll mm. die, and, um, and putting them all together in a meal. So you always look for now, when I eat, in fact, my mouth's watering, just think of all that kimchi and sour yeah. but that's another story. <laughs> when, when you eat, I'm sitting there now, and I always sit there and think, where's the fat in my food? Where's the protein in my food? And when you mix fat and protein, ah. you get full for so much longer. You just that's why you mm. get so hungry on processed food because they don't have enough good fat in them. Yeah, and and enough enough nutrition in general. I mean, there's so many obese people now that are undernourished, so they keep eating because their body keeps searching for those key nutrients that their diet's missing. They keep thinking the next meal is going to provide them with those trace minerals that they're just not getting, and it doesn't. And so, when you have, you might be eating less food. You might be on a juice you know, juice fast, but your body, you know, will get used to it because suddenly it'll realize, oh, hang on, I'm getting all the essential nutrients I need. I'm completely nourished and I don't need to eat anything else. Yeah, no, I agree. But the other thing also that we found is that when you have sugar it very high mm. up in your diet, we also tend, I tend, we tend to find quite high, a lot of candida and yeast infections in people's diets. Mm. And mm. one of the issues is that the, the yeast is fed by the sugar because mm. You, mm. when you take people, so what we found here is that we need, we need to tell everybody that, in fact, you should be quite clear about the fact that when you take yeast, uh, when you take sugar out of your diet, you get very severe sugar withdrawal. Um, reactions as well. So you need to be careful to also be taking sugar out of your diet in a more intelligent way and an aware way because we have people, mm. when, you, when you take sugar out of a diet and the yeast isn't being fed anymore, you will find people going through a Herxheimer's reaction, which is where they're feeling sad and depressed and not enjoying life because that's when the mm. yeast is dying off in your gut. And it's an amazing wow. I didn't. I never it. thought about it like that. That's Wow, that's quite quite a um, profound kind of thing really isn't it that your your yeah your body's suddenly going into this healing kind of mechanism yeah. part of that and you know yeah. you have people ringing you and the sugar free diet you have people we have a sugar free diet that we make and you have people ringing you and mm. they say I'm I'm hungry you're not giving me enough food and you're like actually you're getting huge amount of calories but what you're mm. not getting is the sugar so you're not feeling satiated because you're expecting the sugar to come in 
Mm. And so mm. and that, having, it's, interesting, it's interesting you talked about that, that getting depressed, um, not yeah. having sugar, because that, that's another um, tip I'd have actually is, um, is, is chromium, which, you know, a supplement, the supplement oh, chromium sort of... Yeah, that that helps um, take insulin uh, and turn it into. Sorry, it helps the insulin take sugar and turn it into energy. But then the other one is 5-HTP because that restores serotonin, um, which is sort of the happy hormone. Um, so people, if they're feeling a bit sad when they're going through a sugar detox, would be would do well to to try to incorporate chromium and 5-HTP to okay, so try and get those second, brain. Okay, so let's 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 explain what that means. So when you're saying chromium, you're meaning liquid chromium. Uh or they can take it in or, tablet form. Uh, 200 okay. micrograms, I'd suggest, a day. Um, as again. long as it's a good quality supplement, um, you know, uh, as long as they look into it and it's from a reputable supplement um, provider. I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of Viridian myself, but um, they're all different uh, supplement brands that people can look, can look into. Um, but 200 oh, micrograms I, is, 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 is the right amount for sort of optimum health that's going to help... help um, you know, curb their appetite and, and uh, help them process any glucose, glucose that they take in and turn it into energy rather than fat. So what you're saying is that if people are struggling, when you start thinking about the fact that I want to now give up having these sugar cravings and eating so much sugar, they should go and get 300 microns, did you say? 200 micrograms. 200 micrograms of chromium. Yeah, and I've always ever mm. taken chromium as a liquid, so I guess the equivalent oh, okay. of tablets or a liquid form, and then what that does is it really, really helps, in fact, to kill your sugar cravings as well. And you're saying it actually ah. breaks down the glucose and makes it more energy efficient. Uh, it, it, yeah, it helps insulin take sugar and turn it into energy, so it, it, it makes the insulin more effective at doing its job. Um, so, so yeah, so, I mean, I, I think they did yeah, a I study in that. Austria. Yeah, yeah. They, did, they did a study in Austria where they put half the people on a restricted diet and then just gave half the people chromium so the people on chromium weren't on a restricted diet and yet they lost the same amount of weight as the people um on the restricted diet so that's how effective it can be it's it's really a wonderful thing for for people trying to lose weight and and we now know also for cutting the sugar cravings um so wow, that's a good and then 5-htp so yeah as 5-htp is well known for sort of suppressing the appetite um, but, and restoring is serotonin. The appetite, or is it a is it a pill? Is it a um, is it what is it? I take it, I take it in tablet form. It's because it restores serotonin. It can also be a good one to have before you go to bed. Right, because 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 it releases uh, it it restores serotonin, which is sort of that happy happy hormone. I mean, when you have a big bowl of pasta, you're getting sort of a serotonin hit as well. Except that then makes you feel bloated and not great, great at the same time. But, you know, we often feel sleepy after a big bowl of pasta, and a lot of that's to do with the, the serotonin that's released. Um, yeah, but why do you take it at night before you go to bed? Because if you want to be happy, don't you want to be happy in the daytime? Oh, nothing wrong with being happy at night time, too. <laughs> but it, it helps me <laughs> um, stave off nightmares and sugar cravings at the same time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, there clearly Laura's, Laura looks really well into the the whole staying happy at night time thing. <laughs> no, but it's a, a, it, I mean, she's also completely slender, so clearly this stuff works as a weight loss thing. I mean, I used the chromium for one of my daughters who just found herself eating so much sugar, um, and mm. then I used liquid chromium for her, and it was really, mm. really effective. It enabled her to not feel like she wasn't in control of it, and she was quite young. And then it, we sort of stopped having as much sugar in her diet. That's brilliant. That's really interesting yeah. to hear about the liquid chromium. That's um, yeah, I can imagine that that would be sort of more bioavailable than a tablet. That that I'm I'm always a huge fan of getting things as um in in a liquid form because I always feel that your body uses it so much better. Now one of the things mm. that I wanted to talk about was hidden sugar in the food. Mm mm. It's such a problem. It's such a problem, isn't it? And one thing that I didn't realize until recently was that anything that ends O-S-E equals sugar, mm. right? Mm. So lactose is a milk sugar. Fructose, as we've talked about, is a fruit sugar. Um, mm. Dextrose is another one that mm. they use, and maltose is another one. And then these are things that we... That they, the trouble is, is we're not used to reading labels and understanding them, I think, anymore. 
Do you not find no. that? No, well, they do a very good job of making things very cryptic. They make it. They do a good job of, you know, tricking tricking people into not not flagging these things up and and, and sort of hiding them. They really are hidden sugars, um, in the sense that <laughs> completely they are. They you know they're different, difficult to interpret. So I think more and more people are becoming aware um, that you know, that they need to read between the lines. Um, and this is definitely something we need to raise a, a awareness about. Um, but, uh, I mean, literally yeah. from breads to cakes to biscuits to yogurt to toothpaste um, it has sugar toothpaste in it. Has sugar. I mean, it, Yeah, but that's, I mean, can you imagine, like, the very Ew. worst thing for your teeth and you're brushing your teeth with, you know, commercial toothpaste full of sugar. Okay. Horrible. Um, yeah. I'm waiting for you to carry on your list so I can go and throw everything out the, the cupboards. <laughs> um, canned salmon, tomato sauces, soy sauce. Um, you know, I mean, they, really, the list just goes on and on. Well, then just things like um, pre-prepared drinks, like when you get the Bloody Mary mixes and things, you know, and even if you don't mm. put, um, you know, those cans that they make. Oh, my yeah. God, the amount of sugar there is in one of those. That's that's amazing actually because I you do think of Bloody Mary as oh I'm I'm being good I'm having a Bloody Mary it's not a um you know pina colada or something like that you know people and it's got a celery stick coming out of it so you sort of it looks like a healthy drink it looks like the healthy option but it's not interesting yeah no it's really really not it's the celery is there just to con you actually I've decided <laughs> but I think it's because we sit, we 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 hide so much sugar in, in anything with tomato. I've now stopped getting anything that's made with tomatoes that I don't actually make myself at home because wow. it's just got mm. so much sugar in it. Mm. Mm. It's completely traumatizing the whole place. Okay, so um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that when you, when people have had a whole lifetime of having sugar one way or another, mm. you we... we we know that they end up with diabetes and things, but like for example, diabetes now it's starting in children, isn't it? Yeah, they're, they're, like they're having to send kids home diabetes. in America to get their injections for diabetes. You know, by the truckloads. Uh, I mean, it's terrifying. It's terrifying. It's a, it's a real epidemic. Um, so, I mean, it's really, we need to take action now. Um, so, what people, could you, if need, you were going to give up processed sugar? Right, the chances mm. of me saying to my children, for example, here you go, darling. Here's a bottle, a, a, a bowl of kimchi, with a side of mm. sauerkraut, <laughs> wash it down. It's never going to happen. <laughs> I think what Clearly. you said before, you know, it's 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 the, it's the detox, it's the transitional diet. So, I mean, I think at first you swap um, for people that are consuming, you know, just normal table sugar. You slowly slowly swap that for something slightly more nutritious, like maple syrup, which at least has a lot of minerals, manganese, zinc, um, things like that in it. Um, so you're getting your body more more used to whole foods. Um, you know, you could even have brown rice sugar uh, and put, put that on things. So I think at first in the transition phase, you try to swap things rather than eliminate them. Yeah, so you're not taking it away completely. What you're doing is you're saying you're still getting some sugar. Here's this. Exactly, exactly. I mean, some people, you know, adults, they're, they're ready to go cold turkey. They really want um, dramatic change and they, and they want quick results. But as you said, it's it's one of the toughest things to give up. So often people, you know, do find it easier to sort of transition their way um, from, a, from a sugar addiction. Yeah, and, um, I'm, and, and then, oh, I'm a yeah. big fan of doing things so you're going to succeed, not fail. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, you want this to be not a quick fix, but a life, a lifetime change. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Build, build the block no, slowly, I agree with you. And, and yeah, yeah. Well, um, and also if you can, if you can look at what you're eating every day, and one of the things is that when you reset your your enzyme activity, your digestive enzymes in your mouth, and you reset what you're trying to achieve, the way to do that is to actually start with baby steps you know if you change half of i say this every single time but if you made half of what you ate every day on every plate like a bunch of green leaves and some raw foods it would actually reset your sugar barometer without you noticing on the way because you would feel full before you would do mm. it mm. and then you wouldn't go yeah, and have that snack as much either yeah that's 
it's really clever, like filling up on the good stuff first. It's it's like yeah. crowding out your diet with the good stuff rather than pulling out the stuff you love. You know, focus on crowding out the diet with all the the essential nutrients the body needs first, and then uh, and then see if it has so many cries for sugar. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Because once you've mm. started to do it that way, you it, it and mm. it takes the body's amazing. It takes two, three, four days to start feeling a change and making it happen. So that's really mm. a. Um, I would suggest starting with there. I would suggest just getting healthier over ground, all around over ground rather. Uh, what I'm trying to mm. say is, I think you should generally speaking get healthier. And as you get mm. healthier, you crave sugar less, and that's what the yeah. magic bullet is. That's how you should be doing it. Mm. Mm. I mean, even with chocolate. I mean, I I I love chocolate. I think you know, I I still I still have some every day, but it's pretty much it's raw, so it's still got um, huge amounts of magnesium. I mean, cocoa is one of the richest sources of magnesium. So, but yeah. I have a small small uh, raw organic dairy sugar free chocolate, which <laughs> might sound disgusting, but it's actually delicious because, as you say, you've changed your taste buds and you've reset them to what they um, recognize as, as, you know, tasty food. Um, so it's still packed with nutrients. It still gives you that mm, post-chocolate um, feel uh, yeah. without <laughs> without the blood sugar spikes um, that, you know, well, you then come crashing you down from. Really, when you try really milky, sweet chocolate after you've tried raw chocolate, it just feels gross. It just, all you can taste it, is ugh. the sugar. It's remarkable. And of it course, like the best way to kill amazing. A, yeah, the best way to kill a craving mm. is to do a juice fast because one of the most interesting things is no one has ever done a juice fast and come out of drinking fruit juices even and said, "Oh, mm. I have a really su- overdeveloped sweet tooth. Give me a donut." Never happened. <laughs> yeah. Never ever ever yeah. happened. Brilliant, That's Laura. Amazing. Thank you so much mm. for joining me. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It was so cool to have a little warble about sugar and what we do and don't do. And, you know, no one's saying you have to be perfect. What we're trying to do is say it shouldn't be something that runs your life. It's not something that because it can make you so sick, sugar, that if you were looking at what you're doing with sugar for yourself and for your family, then everything is going to get better doing it that way. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody, and I'm really grateful that you're here and I really enjoyed our time together and this is Living World Radio and I'm your host Gita Sidhu Rob and we will be speaking to you again next week. Good night. bloated? Is your energy levels really low? Do you find everything that you eat goes straight to fat? My name is Candice and I am the naturopathic nutritionist at Nosh Detox. I am here to tell you that your body needs a rest. If that sounds like you, you are ready to try a Nosh juice fast. A juice fast is the most natural way for your body to detox while providing you all the life-saving minerals and vitamins that your body needs and craves. From beginners to advanced juices, we have all the options that may be available to you or suited to you. Call me on 0845-257-6674 or go to noshdetox.com and click on the right program for you. I'm right here to help you and support you. Thank you. Detox is an award-winning company for your ultimate health improvement. Nosh Detox system works on all areas of the body, having dealt with thousands of clients whose health dramatically improved within days. For more details, visit noshdetox.com. Noshdetox.com.